Hello my YouTube gang, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel and my name is Cyprian Msangi. This is the second video on getting started with PGSQL and with Laravel in the mix of course. In this video, we'll be actually preparing the environments under which we are going to work on and of which it will include downloading, installing and configuring XAMPP now. XAMPP is going to act as our local server for those who don't know and then thereafter we shall proceed to pgsql.org website where we shall download the latest version of pgsql installer. Okay, one thing that I feel that I should tell you before we get started is that for those who have ever used XAMPP then that's what I'm going to integrate with our pgsql so that we use the db seamlessly. It will be a long process but I'm with you so you don't need to worry anymore. So let's go and get our hands dirty because why not? So welcome back my friends, I hope you have your, your set of mouse and keyboard in waiting and ready to go. So I want you people to head over to your best browser that you are using currently in your machine and uh, I want you to head over to this website that is called apachefriends.org. I leave the link down in the description so that you don't get problems in getting the link right. So here uh, we have come here to download the XAMPP installer that we are going to use to install our XAMPP into our local machine so that it will serve as our local server as I had told you before. So directly to what you are supposed to do, my machine is a 64-bit. If yours is a 32-bit, I think you can find uh, other distributions here. But for mine, it is a 64-bit, so I'm going to download this one. So I'm going to hit this button and wait as I download my XAMPP.exe version. It will take uh, some time, so I guess I'm going to pause the video so that uh, after it has completed downloading so that we can install it and continue. So there we go, guys. Uh, as you can see on the screen, my ZAMP has already downloaded. And what now I'm supposed to do is just head, head right to the folder which I have downloaded my ZAMP. And as you can see, there it is. It is ZAMP Windows time 64, which means it is a 64-bit application. So I'm going to run this application. So that we can install it. So after you click OK, ZAMP automatically is going to pull out this window. And what you're supposed to do is click Next. Next again. Another Next. Then, oh, we have a problem. The selected folder is not empty. Please select a different folder. So I guess uh, I had tried earlier to install ZAMP. So I think it... Uh, it's good we have uh, encountered this problem so that I can show you what you're supposed to do. So if you browse uh, your local disk C, then uh, you're going to see this ZAMP here. So this is the folder that was created earlier when I, when I tried to install the other ZAMP before I, I, I started streaming this video. So what I'm supposed to do is just delete this folder so that we can continue with our installation. So click next and you can see now it's working. Next, next, next. So um, it, will going, it, it is going to pull out this website, the, the bitnambi.com website. So you don't, need, you don't need to worry. So you just go back to your ZAMP. You click the ZAMP icon. And as you can see, it has started installing. So I guess I'll pause my video there so that... Uh, it can finish installing ZAMP, then we'll continue from there. So here we go. My ZAMP is almost done installing. So ZAMP is done installing. And uh, do you want to start the control panel now? So if you are ready to start it now, so you just leave that uh, text, box, text box checked. So I'm going to click finish. So there is one cool thing that I'm going to teach you on what uh, as far what uh, as far as far as ZAMP is concerned. So as uh, you can see on my window now, uh, ZAMP is open and every time you 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 boot your machine and you want to use ZAMP, you have to open the application and click start here. And then you again click start here. You start the Apache and you start the MySQL. 
Then after that, now you can click the admin so that you can go straight to the ZAMP control panel that is going to open with your default browser. So what I'm trying to teach you is here, instead of uh, doing that now that we'll be using PGSQL and not ZAMP, you know, it will be very hectic for you opening ZAMP each and every other each and every other time that you need to use it. So what I'm going to teach you is how to keep ZAMP always open on uh, on your I mean every time you open your ZAMP um it should be open. And now uh, so that whenever you want to use PG SQL you don't need to go back to ZAMP and click it so that you can open it. So I guess I'm going to show you that in the next video because I think uh, this one has uh, taken us a lot of time recording this one. So not to bore you, let me just do that in the next video so that uh, we break down this thing and we get on and going. So until that time, continue subscribing, continue watching, continue sharing if you find this video useful. Thank you very much for the support that you're giving me, for the likes, for the views and everything. See you later.